Hi guys, and today I'll be reviewing Kickass. I've already reviewed two episodes of Mandalorian today, but yeah, now we're gonna review Kickass, a movie that I've watched a lot from my childhood. Well, my teen years anyway. Yeah, definitely a classic movie. It's just like the story is basically where someone's just like fed up of watching people suffering in the world, you know, where just people just like stand idly by and let people, well, let bad things happen to people. So there was one person that decided to become a superhero and then like he basically ends up getting in an accident at the same time. No, that was like the first time because it's the second time where he actually becomes well known. And the thing is, he got too much into the you know, spotlight. And there was these other superheroes, Hit Girl and Big Daddy. Which, you know, Hit Girl, Jesus Christ. Man, back in the day when I first seen Hit Girl. Damn. <laughs> and Big Daddy. Her mentor and, you know, her dad. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Those two are just awesome. But, like, basically the things that they do, they think that uh, Kick-Ass is responsible. Like, some of the things... Because they're going after a specific person. And, yeah, Kikas basically gets blamed for what they do. Because they're taking out criminals, but not just taking them out. They're, like, taking them out. <laughs> yeah, trying to take down this guy's business. And I guess Kikas gets blamed for it. And, you know, when Kikas gets really famous, I guess one of them... Well, people, I guess, you know what happens when things get big. People like to cosplay. So someone basically cosplays as Kikas and then... They get killed and, yeah, that kind of scares, yeah, the actual kick-ass. Because he was just like a normal, everyday kid. He, was, he also wasn't popular, so being kick-ass and getting all this popula popularity, like, is what probably, you know, just, just, you know, made him keep going for a little bit. But then, you know, when things started to get real, he wanted to quit. But then that's when he meets, you know, Hit Girl and Big Daddy. The MP, you know, the M MVPs of the movie. The ones that are actually doing the proper action, especially Hit Girl. She probably has the biggest kill count in the whole movie. I'm definitely going to say that. Because Big Daddy, you def we definitely get to see him kill a few people, but not as much as Hit Girl. Like, he trained her well. <laughs> There's also that scene at the beginning where he's, like, shooting his daughter, but, you know, she has a bulletproof vest, but she's trying to get used to the impact so she can get up faster. Yeah. Because he's trying to make his daughter strong because we kind of get, like, a... Backstory, or oh, oh yeah, because Big Daddy is played by Nicolas Cage. I still argue if this is like his best role, because yeah, it definitely does. It does. It does bring a lot to this role. Very enjoyable. Both him and Hit Girl. Yeah, this. I don't know if this was like her first big role, which she's played by Chloe Grace. Yeah, definitely. Because I did see her in a, another movie before, I guess this one, where she was even where she was even younger. Uh, Big Mama's House 2, which I guess that's kind of like a childhood movie to me. So I guess I don't really... Because I know a lot of people just view that as like a... Just one of those movies, if you know what I mean. Because I do enjoy the first one. Like, that's a classic. Second one, if I didn't grow up with it, I'd probably say it's trash. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> the third one, ugh. I watched that once at cinemas, and yeah. But yeah, I basically first seen Chloe Grace from, you know, Big Mama's House 2. Yeah, she was enjoyable in that movie too, but yeah, Kick-Ass is what I will always know her for. Yeah. Man, she's she just so awesome in this movie. But yeah. And then, uh, yeah, the main guy. But yeah, the main character is Aaron Taylor, you know, who plays as Kick-Ass. Definitely a likeable guy, like probably the most relatable character in the whole movie. Definitely. Because <laughs> of how his character starts off. You know, just one of those ge geeky kind of kids who just read co comics and stuff. Then he becomes like a superhero. Just He just gets inspired by the comics that he reads. So he decided like, what if I just should just be a superhero? And then one day he does try to. And like I said, something happens the first time he beats a superhero. He basically gets stabbed and ends up in an accident. But, like, the doctors, like, what he says to one of the doctors, he says to not let, not tell his dad about the clothes, or so it kind of looks like, <laughs> like, he was beaten up naked. So his dad thinks he got whipped or something. But he says, no, that didn't happen. They just threw, threw him in my clothes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he said to him.
And his dad, yeah. But yeah. Some people after that think he was gay, so like the girl that he likes, that's he kinda used that to get close to her. And then when he reveals himself as kick ass, while also revealing that he's not gay, I guess that somehow still works because she only got close to him to well, the normal him when he wasn't I guess he was gay, I guess. I don't know, it's just a weird storyline, that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> and how she still wants to be with him just because he's kick-ass, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I guess the first act of this movie, I'd say it's the most realistic. Second and third act, it gets a bit more comic booky, but makes sense, I guess. Especially when we get to the third act, <laughs> with that specific thing I'm talking about, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Or should I say two specific things, but... I'm mainly, fo- I'm, I'm mainly focusing on that Pacific thing. You know, that big daddy buys. Because, yeah. you know, Hit Girl's just like, whoa, look at this, dad. And then it's just like, oh, damn, I've got to buy this for $300,000. <laughs> no. Because, yeah, where did he get that money from? Does he, like, steal the bad guy's money or something? But did I even reveal the whole story for Hit Girl and Big Daddy? Because, basically, the dad ended up in jail... Because he used to be a cop, and he had the part, and he had a you know cop partner played by, you know Imari, if you know him from Power, you know who plays as a ghost, you know from Power, because yeah, I keep forgetting that he's in this movie, and he's he's like the Nicholas Cage's you know cop partner, and he actually looked after the daughter when he was in prison, because you know the wife passed away because she couldn't really take what was going on in her life, but in her death, you know, basically Hit Girl was born. And, you know, like I said, the cop partner was looking after, you know, Nicolas Cage's girl in the movie. Okay, that kind of sounds a bit wrong. But, you know, Big Daddy's, you know, a little girl, kick, you know, hit girl. Yeah. And when he gets out of prison, he trains his daughter to become hit girl and, you know, fight crime and take out the person who, I, like, I, I can't remember how responsible this guy is for, you know, the wife's death, but... Just all the crime that's gone on in the city. I know it's like he's responsible. And maybe he, like some of those drugs that she took, like he's the one who, you know, was putting them all over the place for her to actually take them. So maybe he just blames her then. <laughs> I mean, her, not her. I mean, the basically the crime boss played by, yeah, uh, Mark Strong. And he's, I guess, he's the, like the main crime boss in the city. And his name is uh, Frank DeMico, I think. Yeah. And Hit Girl and Big Daddy are trying to take him down for what he's done to the city and how he's possibly responsible for, you know, the death of the wife as well. That, I guess, took her to going towards suicide. Yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of their whole goal for the movie. And kick gets in a mix of that and kind of gets blamed for some of the stuff that they do while trying to take down Frank D'Amico. Yeah. So then, you know, like I said, Frank D'Amico tries to go after... Kick ass because he thinks he's responsible, but then like they get footage that it's actually someone else, the Batman looking guy, <laughs> which is someone like one of the early scenes in the movie where we get introduced to Big Daddy. Yeah, like basically describe someone as looking like Batman, but he said he didn't say that. Maybe someone else did, but I don't know. But he basically gets killed anyway. Oh yeah, his son. Oh yeah, I forgot about his son. You know, played by Christopher Mintz, the guy on the top right. Yeah, I'm, I'm mainly, I first met him in Superbad as, you know, McLovin. And then there's this, this is the second thing that I'm known for. Chris, Frank Demico's son, which before Kick-Ass, well, does Kick-Ass it ever, I can't, I don't, I've only watched the second one once, so I don't even, because he never really, because Kick-Ass never really finds out his identity, because he actually goes, well, does he go to the school? He's the same school when he's not kick ass. Because he tried to be friends with him, but you know, he has like uh, bodyguards that say to go away basically. But you know, in a more negative way. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I don't think kick ass ever finds out that that's the same person. So Because he was basically like the. If they actually became proper friends without, you know, because they still kind of do, but in their hero identities instead of their non he were identities yeah because he did try to be his friend before then because um 
Frank D'Amico's son decides to do a plan since he he's also a fan of comics. Because everybody goes to this comic book store. Or even uh, the person that becomes kick-ass girlfriend, you know, goes to a comic book store. Like, it's like everyone likes comics in this movie anyway. <laughs> Lol. But yeah. <clears throat> so yeah. Because he thinks of a plan to become a superhero. And I guess he, by doing that, uh, Frank D'Amico kind of betrays one of his guys, Tony. And, you know, I guess Red Miss is the one who makes a call about this drug dealer. And then he gets some fame from that and then gets popular really quick, probably more faster than Kickass. Because Kickass actually has like a web page. And I guess the Red, Red Mist does the same thing, but it seems like I don't know if he gets more fans or gets the fans that Kickass has much faster. But yeah, I, I didn't really talk about that scene where he actually becomes famous that much. Yeah, because that's probably my favourite scene in the movie. It's so cool. Because just imagine if someone actually did that. Just dressed up in a costume and they see this person getting beat down by three people. And then this person in the costume just fights them. That'd be, that'd be crazy. That'd definitely get a lot of views on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's always going to be my favourite scene. Other than, you know, Hit Girl, like her scenes, they're just epic. Big Daddy, yeah. Just that scene alone, it's just... It's just crazy to think about. Like, imagine if something like that happened. That's probably like, that's probably why it's my favorite scene, because the way how they did it as well with people recording him and just then he says his name, "Who are you?" And then he says, "I'm Kickass." <laughs> Lol. Yeah, that was a cool scene. It always be the best scene for me. But yeah, back to Chris Frank D'Amico's, you know, son. He basically pretends to be a superhero. He also has a lot more gadgets than Kickass, since you know. But still, even though he has a lot more stuff and he even has basically a Batmobile, but it's more like a Mustang or something like that. Well, not a Mustang. Basically, it's a muscle car. But it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I remember that car. Before actually watching the movie again. Yeah. Because I haven't watched this for like two, three years. Yeah. I watch it every two, three years anyway. Mm -hmm. And this is probably like the... In those two, three years, how many times have I actually watched this movie? Because this movie came out in 2010. Because we actually got it in DVD, like... Because I, I definitely watched it when it first came out. And then we got it on DVD later on in that year, in 2010. Yeah, because this movie is like 10 years old now, so... I had to review it. <clears throat> but yeah. Because, yeah, like... I'm still not even getting to the point, what I'm trying to say. Because, yeah, Chris... The, Mc, the McLovin actor. Yeah. <laughs> that's, what pe that's what most people know him as. Yeah, because his, his plan is to be friends with Kick-Ass. Because they kind of link up online, then, you know, he meets him. Then he finds out. Oh, yeah, because that, that's how everything links with... Because he's basically found a place where he's going to ambush Kick-Ass, but instead the whole place is burning down. Because that was supposed to be a trap. Because that was the plan, like, that was the son's plan to actually get... Because he convinced his dad to set all this up. And then I guess it kind of doesn't really work out because that's when Big Daddy, you know, took out that whole crew in that warehouse and that's why it was burning. And since, you know, he made them get burned, Big Daddy's going to get, oh yeah, <laughs> burned in the process, I, I have to say it. Because obviously, spoilers, yeah, Big Daddy dies in this movie, which is so sad, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of funny at the same time, but yeah, it's sad. Even when he's trying to tell Hit Girl what to do, because like there's a lot of guys. Because even though things didn't work out the first time, he still calls Kickass again, so they can meet up again. Because Red Miss wants to meet Hit Girl and you know Big Daddy to set up the trap. Because he says that you know Red Mist and Kickass could be exposed, their identities could be exposed. So he convinces him to get help from, you know, Big Daddy and, you know, Hit Girl. But it's actually a trick. You know, Red Miss is tricking him. And when he's introducing himself, he shoots Hit Girl. And then, you know, all the all of his dad's men come in and grab him. Then that's when we get that scene. Yeah, that scene, man. <laughs> Where they record, they basically live stream up a, a live execution of superheroes. Because, you know, you see Big Daddy and... 
you know, kick ass in a chair and these guys talking about something that they're going to do to kick ass and Big Daddy. They basically torture him on a live stream. It's like so crazy. Because it's, it's even on the news as well, but they had to, you know, take it off because it, it was getting really graphic. But people could still like watch it. I don't know if they used like, you know, those, you know, those uh, browsers where you can go in the dark web. I don't know if you can still watch it that way. I don't know how they were still watching that because I don't know if when they said they, it's not like they took it offline, like you couldn't see it online. So I don't know how they were still seeing that. Other than I just can't remember what they call it. You know, where you can go on the black web. Uh, I mean, the dark web, <laughs> the black web. <laughs> oh my god, what am I saying? Because I'm trying to talk. I'm talking a bit too fast, that's why I make mistakes sometimes, but yeah. Because, yeah, they're basically getting beat to death, and then Big Daddy, to put him on fire. And then that's when Hit Girl comes and tries to save her dad. And at the same time, when he's getting burned alive, he's trying to, he's telling them what to do, so it just, it just sounds a bit, it just sounds so funny. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. But when, you know, when she takes out all the guys, thanks to her dad's help, so yeah, like he's done at the same time and he's also telling the dog what to do. It's just that's just crazy. And then you know, he puts out the flames, then you know, Hit Girl just shoots the camera, shows over, yeah. <laughs> Saves kick ass as well, but you know, it seems like he's kind of responsible for Big Daddy's death. Cause we we do get a touching scene at the end. Also, I didn't really talk much about Omari Hardwick's character, since the only thing he does in this movie is just warn Nicolas Cage's character about dangers and how he gets exposed because he's also the one who tells him that he was on camera so he knows that he, he was responsible and that's when they find him. So, But he wasn't expecting that Red Mist was going to be a part of it too, so yeah. But overall, Omari's Hardwick character wasn't really that involved in the story. I feel like they could have did more. I haven't read the comics, so I don't even know if he's even more involved, but yeah. And I, I don't think he's in a sequel too, so... Mm. <laughs> I might review the sequel, but... Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I don't even know if it's even worth talking about, but yeah. But yeah, I'm just going to get closer to the end where they want to get... Well, when Hit Girl wants to get revenge and kick ass, he, he just comes because he wants to redeem himself. And then that's when we get revealed that... They basically have a jetpack, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he's just learning how to use it. Oh, well, hit girl just pretends to be a, a normal, li just a normal little girl who's lost her family, which you know she literally has. So she's able to do the act well, and it, and when once she gets to Frank Demeco's place, she, yeah, like she like I said, she pretends to be a little girl, just a helpless little girl who's lost. And then she just you know takes him out, goes up to the elevator, takes more out, but then she runs out of ammo. Then she gets in a predicament where she can't really defend herself. And then that's when kick -ass comes. Yeah. But then there's also the bazooka part. I didn't really mention that. <laughs> Say hello to my little friend. But yeah, the, one of the one of uh, Chris's bodyguards who we saw early in the movie. He basically gets like a bazooka once, you know, it was like when they broke into the, you know, Big Daddy's place. He basically picked up the bazooka and kept that. <laughs> yeah, they make jokes about that bazooka in the movie. But then we see something better than a bazooka, a flipping jetpack. Because yeah, he tries to since kick, since uh, hit girls so hard to kill. Because even though they've got a cornered with guns, like they still can't kill us. So the the guy who picked up who picked up the bazooka in Big Daddy's place kind of is planning to use that on hit girl. But then you know, Kickass comes with the jetpack and just kills them all. <laughs> yeah, it gets wiped out. And also, whenever someone says, say hello to my little friend, do they always die? Hello. <laughs> like Scarface. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, spoilers for Scarface. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, that scene was cool. And then Hit Girl. And it's just Hit Girl and Kick-Ass fighting Chris and Frank. Yeah, that's a cool scene at the end. I kind of like how Kick-Ass and Red Miss basically killed each other when they're fighting. Hello. <laughs> Because they're basically noob superhero and noob supervillain. Yeah. And then you just see Hit Girl fighting the person who basically, could you say, is respons responsible for her mother and her dad's death. And she only actually gets, because it seems like she's winning most of the fight, but then he's able to get the best of her. And, you know, 
was never going to take her out, but then, you know, Kick-Ass comes with the bazooka. It says, says something like, pick on someone your own si- size, and then just shoots the bazooka, then it just goes out the window, and then boom. And yeah, that's pretty much how the final battle goes. But yeah, it's more epic when you actually watch it, if you've never seen the movie. Yeah, definitely great fighting scenes in this movie. Pretty cool story to tell. There's not really much movies like this, where they try to say, like, what would it be like if someone decided to become a superhero? Yeah, this is probably like, this is probably like the best example for that, because I don't really know much movies that have done this. I think there is one, but I've never watched it. I don't know how that turned out. So yeah, I might check that out one day. Because there is an other movie where it's someone who just wanted to be a superhero because it's not like these characters have superpowers. They just want to be heroes. And it's kind of dangerous in a world full of all these criminals. But it, it, it just couldn't take all the crime that's going on in the city. Especially when it affects them. So they wanted to do something about it. And that's that's basically the whole premise of the movie. Apart from, you know, the kid who wanted to be a superhero, which is the reason... Because they probably would have never revealed that. Because even Hitgirl at the end reveals her identity to Kickass, and he reveals his identity, even though she kind of already knew. Because <laughs> he was a noob, so... Because they have more knowledge than him, and they can do more things than him, like find out his IP address, because they do find where he lives and all that earlier in the movie, so, yeah. He just seems like a noob to them. But he, he becomes, I guess, better in the end, thanks to a lot of firepower that he had. But yeah, definitely still a great movie. The second one, because yeah, the second one, I guess they make Chris, you know, Frank Demi calls son the main villain, since, you know, the dad gets taken out in this movie by the bazooka, so yeah. Uh, it just wasn't executed as well. There was definitely some good elements, it just wasn't as good as the first one. They didn't really need to make a sequel, really, but, yeah. And I kind of wish that Nicolas Cage's dad... Uh, dad. Yeah, Big Daddy, basically. Like, I wish he was in the movie a lot longer. Yeah, was, he was in the movie the most of the time. I kind of wish he never died, to be honest. Like, I wish he was in the sequel, but, yeah. What can you do? He was a great character, anyway. And we get Jim Carrey for the sequel, so, yeah. And that's where I'm just going to leave it, yeah, before I say anything else about the sequel. That'll be a topic for another day, if I do review it. But yeah, guys, that's my review of Kick-Ass. I hope you enjoyed it. And maybe I'll review the second one in the future. But yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.